You know me, I'm not one to waste a piece of wood. Uh, and only use it once when I can use it 10 or 20 times. But, well, this one is probably at the end of anything useful. Um, so I better make it into something that I can keep. Now, I think I can probably get a little plate from it, keep a nice wide rim and put on the colour that I was thinking of in my last colouring one that didn't really quite work out well enough. So, first thing first is to get this back turned and uh, hmm get some kind of little recess in there ready to hold this. And here it is spinning happily on the lathe. So starting at the edge, just just truing that up, teeth are in, sitting here with a cup of coffee in the comfort of my living room as I record the audio for this one. Um, I still haven't learned to put my smock on, have I? Um, Wood shavings really stick to wool. I'm sure there's a practical use for that somewhere in the world. Right, so just putting a little bit of definition on the bottom, getting my little recess ready for an expansion hold um, and undercutting the foot that it's going to sit on slightly so, so as to make sure it'll sit flat and uh, putting a little dovetail now into um, the recess <clears throat> the back still needs a little bit more of a tension. You can see there are three distinct curves um, spinning around and uh, obviously they need blending together. So I think I get onto that shortly. If I don't, then th this won't be a project worth keeping. Oh, here we go. Right. And so just trying to get that into a single faceted curve. Takes a few goes. Um, I love doing these long cuts on the outside, lovely sweeping cuts. You can see there's still a little bit of a ridge there, so um, I'll come back and tackle that shortly, get that out of the way. Uh, and then sanding. <clears throat> I usually start on this dry beach, it is very dry, uh, at about 120, uh, and work up to 240, sometimes 300, um, sometimes even to 400, but the cut and polish that I use from Chestnut works pretty well from 240 grit onwards anyway, puts a nice smooth finish on. For some reason I didn't film the putting in of those two lines and burning them in with a bit of Formica, but maybe I'll cover that in a different video at some point. So just a case of holding a piece of towel or paper cloth or safety cloth to it while it's turning. And you can see there how thin uh, this is going to be. So there's going to be a little bit of flex on that outer edge. So I'm just starting cutting a very small area first. Light shavings, a light, um, almost shear scraping kind of cut really. I decided to keep the middle in to give it a bit more meat and body um, while I'm doing the colouring. And essentially the colouring starts off the same as the very last video. And I even get to the point as in the last video where I've got a yellow background and the black lines. But for me, there was something lacking with that when I did this the last time. So I came up with a variation on this one and the variation, good old bit of splattering with a, an old toothbrush. Um, I don't think it worked very well. I think it put too much on. So I might need to um, do a bit of uh, experimenting with splattering to get uh, a less dramatic, <laughs> less bold. Well, I'm looking at it now, I suppose, what, about 10 days after I did this, some of me quite likes that, but I'm not a minimalist. I don't stop at one go. So here's some red going on as well to put a bit of variety in there. And with the red, I'm being a little bit more circumspect, putting less on. Don't be so um, verbose. Right, here we go. Um, airbrush is coming on and there is my Crackle stencil. The stencil I bought from Amazon, which uh, they no longer have in stock. But if you search online for Crackle stencils, you'll find similar ones, I'm sure. 
this one really for me gives a very um, safe uh, alternative to fractal burning which I know has killed a number of people. Um, who wants to do a hobby that might kill you? Not me. Um, case of working round and the eagle-eyed of you will spot that I've you know I couldn't stick at red and black or black and yellow uh, and there's some red in there as well which I, I think makes quite a nice um, nice addition. It's sort of like a twisted gnarled woodland scene against a fiery sky that doesn't look very natural. Right, get your shares out if you're in, uh, invested in, in any masking tape companies because I'm playing around with the tape again. So this is combining a few of the ideas in, in more recent videos. I haven't worked so much on, this, on the shadow effect but putting in different blocks of colour just to make something a bit different. After all, I can't do something exactly the same. Um, so here we go, coming, tape coming off, and you can see those slightly darker areas. Some of you might think, don't like it. And Valerie, if you're watching, apologies to the white balance on my camera keep changing itself. I still haven't sorted out the software for that. Right, so there's shaded areas. Now come the lines and black lines on this one. And a little later on, some red lines going on as well. Although look how um, abstemious I'm being with my masking tape, reusing the pieces as much as possible. I think this top line is going to be a red one. You can see I've uh, skipped ahead quite a few. It looks like it takes a lot of time to do this kind of colouring, but um, really it doesn't. You just, just need to be a little bit neat about making sure the gap is reasonably even. What I like about the red is it's allowing some of the other colour still to come through. And it's looking perhaps rather messy. Still not sure I like it. Is that going to stop me? The gloves are going on, of course it isn't going to stop me. So a little bit of shape going in, some more of the red, which I think gives it a bit more vibrancy. And then I'm going to colour in some of those triangles. It really is not much of a step up from a kid's doodle. Um, but then a lot of the techniques I use are really the kind of things that I probably did as a kid at primary school or play school. So where are we now? Yeah, just about finished and now looking like I'm taking great care and great precision over this so I don't go colour in over the lines. Um, Again, I, I, I bleh, 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 bleh. might be able to speak properly in a moment. I think I like the black triangles going on. I don't know if it needed a bit more thought, a bit more design, but I am, I suppose, attracted primarily to things being, um, I was going to say slipshod and messy. Um, organic doesn't sound right. None of those words sound right being expressive and experimental. So some red going on, and I think that really does uh, make it more interesting to look at rather than if I had done all of them black. But I decided it didn't look quite balanced enough, so some more black. Anyway, tape coming off again, you're starting to see what it looks like. Now with this one, I did leave it quite a long time to dry before I put the sanding sealer on and you should see that the colour actually remains fixed. It doesn't fade in the way that last video did, which is well, a couple of weeks back now. Didn't post one last weekend because I was off in Portugal visiting my son and his partner Gabriella. So, so no video, but I did do this before I went. So you can see the colour, the stain has dried properly. It hasn't faded at all, like the picture. Help! Where's it gone? Oh, phew, here we go. So, gloss lacquer going on. This is a car acrylic lacquer, high coat of the manufacturers. And uh, light coat, that's the first one that's gone on. And then the obligatory crouch down and look across, see if I've missed anything. And I did about five coats of the lacquer. 
And as you all discover later, I probably should have waited longer for it to dry properly. But anyway, I'm back on the lathe and turning out the inside now. And I'm having to go very, very carefully um, because this piece of wood has become very thin. Probably, oh, I suppose, about th three eighths, four to a half an inch. I shouldn't think five eighths of an inch anywhere. So um, there is not quite a smooth bottom to it as I would like because I didn't want to make a hole in the middle. Sanding and then finishing with uh, chestnuts, uh, wax and polish or cut and polish as it's called, get the name right. Um, bring up a nice shine on the inside. I like to have wood in the middle so that you can see that it is wood not plastic or pottery and then I had to uh, tidy up the back a little bit as well where I'd been rather zealous with my spraying of colours but it came off very easily and then wiping off the dust and then just to give the uh, rim a bit more gleam some burnishing cream was called into action um, put on with the lathe stationery and then very light pressure you don't want to put pressure on the cloth um, as uh, that can sometimes leave it a bit streaky but then just gently pulling uh, from the center to the edge <clears throat> very light touch and there we have it finished in all its glory well I think it's glorious and makes a nice little tapping noise in the middle well here it is finished in all its glory and look at that lovely shine now hopefully my webcams aren't picking up the blemishes because i really was a little bit too impatient to get this finished and posted so there are uh, a few blemishes on the surface maybe i'll be honest and show them in the close-ups but maybe i won't um i like this one very much actually I like the mixture of the different coloured areas and the combination of the lines and the triangles and I like this bit up here, the warmth of the colour there and I like being able to see through the red areas into the, the texture of the colour below. Um, I was going to give this away as a 5,000 subscriber giveaway but there are uh, those blemishes, those thumbprints, fingerprints in it that I really, I don't know, unless someone begs me for it. Until next time, thanks for watching. I think there might be three fingerprints. And a thumbprint. <laughs>